Okay, let's, uh, let's try again. Uh, slow hand, 1757. Everyone's dangerous on this 15-minute uh, auto pay and forget the ratings. It's relative to the pool. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, dear, oh dear. Um, Bishop, yeah. All right, I'll try and be shy of the light square bishop exchange. See what happens. Probably won't help that much. I mean, bishop. Mm, okay. He hasn't gone for a Maroxy bind. I'm thinking exchange sack in this line, especially after f4. It's very committal. If I play rook c3 and knight e4, and try and get this diagonal later, that'd be quite powerful. Just a simple exchange sack like here. When faced with this as white, I found that very annoying. Tempted, because white's weakened himself on the king side quite a bit. I'm gonna do it. Even though dragon is usually when casting queenside, but here it's still quite powerful, I think. Big center pawn. Maybe uh, later e5 and queen h4, even. Or e5, bishop c6, queen h4. made possible with FG if I play HG and then I've got E5. Whoa! So E5, Queen H4 installing my Queen, Bishop C6, also Knight C4. Why don't I just... Knight C3 is also... Okay, there was a check or whatever, so Knight C3 might be a threat now. Or E5, Queen H4. Or e5 bishop c6. That's all pretty, pretty nice. I like this position. The exchange down. There's career paths for the pieces, isn't there? This bishop can end up in charge of uh, the diagonal later <laughs> against the king. Uh, so e5 and uh, bishop c6. Pretty soon, in fact. Uh, except, hang on. The knights and pre. So maybe uh, safety point. Uh, F5 first, then E5. F5, no big deal with that. So looks well supported with F5. Don't need to move it back. Can be annoying on C3. No queen G3 or anything. I think F5, E5, bishop C6. Juicy plan on the cards. The queen is set to uh, on the career path to be on h4. So the exchange sack offers this great. Someone described it as improvability. I've never really thought of that as part of my evaluations of positions to in assess improvability of pieces. Maybe that's a good word. That the bishop can be improved, the queen can be improved. This pawn on e5 is blocking in the bishop from e5 though. So e5 comes at a cost, but I want to drive away that knight. Or do I? There's another way of playing it, bishop e5, but then king g7 can be stopped with bishop h6 if I wanted the rook on h8. Unless rook f7 to h7, and I'll be on h2. So bishop e5 might offer this one having good career prospect. Mind you, bishop f4... I don't know. So this knight, I don't know, kicking it for bishop c6. Rook f7 later, bishop f6 maybe, rook h7. I think this knight is one of white's better pieces. Um, the other thing I can do is, um, what about something like queen a5, if I just want to target c3, or tie, get 
get some pieces tied down defensively uh, to C3. Uh, okay. Well, Queen A5 has Bishop B4, the old Bishop B4, handy for white here. Uh, so E5 I can get away with because Knight is protecting D6. I think E5 and Bishop C6 for the moment. And if needed, well, that looks dangerous anyway. So Bishop C6, I've actually got Knight D2 if I want, but I don't want to. Do that. I want to keep that knight for. I want to keep being exchanged and accrue other. I just improve all the pieces, use the improvability of the position. A la Aronian's uh, classic positional sacrifice we witnessed against Giri recently. So uh, knight e2, bishop c6, queen h4, uh, maybe bishop h6 to f4, or rook f7, bishop f8, rook h7. That would coordinate an attack. On H two, and defend D six as well, or King's Engine style with Rook F seven, Bishop F eight, classic maneuvers in the King's Engine. So Knight E two, Bishop C six, looks fun. Okay, so beautiful position, I think. Um, no need to rush to win back any exchange. Uh, so Queen H4 starting to install pieces. Bishop D6. Mm, there's Queen C4. Uh, Rook D8, Queen C4. Check. So I think maybe Rook F7 first to extinguish those horrible pesky checks. Um, mm, Rook F7. Rook D1, Queen H4, Bishop D6. There's Knight F2 if I want it, so I think I'll go for that. So I want to install the Queen over here, Queen H4. Also Bishop F8 if I want to protect D6 first, just in case. Then Queen H4 and then Rook H7. Hmm. Okay, here's the decision. I think yes, bishop's not doing much on g7, so why not spend the move just protecting d6 for a moment? Put queen h4 plan on hold for one move. Mind you, knight g3, knight g3, and I might be regretting my decision. Uh, queen h4 though, knight e4, bishop e4. It's a strong bishop replacement on e4. Uh, I've still got things like uh, rook h7. Um, okay, the knight served its duty there. So uh, next stage, get the bishop on e4. And then the queen h3 is queen h3 is pinned on g2. So knight e4, bishop e4, queen h3, I'll just take. So I want to play rook h7. If queen c4 actually might be d5, rook d5, but then queen h2 mate. So getting rook h7 is dangerous. Queen sack is not on the cards. Any forcing moves, docking computer stuff of interest, not particularly, I think, at the moment. So rook h7 next. Then maybe d5. <clears throat> if I want to exchange off or keep a pawn on d5, my center. So rook h7. Mind you, okay, queen c4. There's actually bishop g2 winning the queen. Good tactic, forcing move. Okay, now here, doubling the pawns. Would that be an outrageous thing to do? Just d5, exchange off bishop. I've got a huge bishop. Supported uh, in the center and two sets of double pawns like grandma's teeth. That looks beautiful. In fact, so beautiful, I'm just tempted just to uh, get the queens off and play d5 here. 
Bishop takes, Rook takes. I just, I just think that's gorgeous, that position. I'm going to do it. In fact, I can, I can win c2 maybe at leisure later. Uh, if I play d5 here. Beautiful bishop. <clears throat> Rook c7 looks absolutely gorgeous as well. <clears throat> this is aesthetically pleasing, this position. So Rook c7. <clears throat> I'm going to victimize these two guys. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> okay. So, compensation for the exchange at move 23. YouTube quiz. How do you evaluate this position? Do you favour black or do you favour white? Why is the exchange up for a pawn here? How do you assess this? I've only got a pawn for it, but I've got career prospects left with the rook now. After all those other brave pieces gave up themselves for <clears throat> creating this position. So rook c7 and uh, maybe crawl the king in. That king can be improved here. Maybe king can uh, go to g5 or it can go to c4. Okay. I'll start putting pressure or should I just take on c2, get one pawn, get another pawn uh, going. Um, Rook b2, bishop b4, rook b... No, there isn't rook b1 after, so... Oh, hang on, hang on. There's there's, there's that, so that's annoying. So rook b5, I don't want an entrance. Oh, it's going to happen, so I've got to be careful here. I think this plotting this path to get g2 is good. Okay, let's get g2. If he's not going to defend his pawns... I think I'm gonna to have to swap this pawn. Oh, okay, okay. So b6 here now. Um, I think, or bishop c2, bishop c2, rook b5, bishop goes back two pawns for the exchange. Bishop goes back. Well, the rook is going to a wonderful place now. Lack of career prospect. <clears throat> Okay, so bishop goes back to the juicy e4 square. Okay, so is he going to coordinate pressure on b2 and b3 now? Okay, what about getting the king to d6, to c5, to c4, to d3? Uh, getting carried away with the position. I think he's got rook b3. Okay, then d4 protecting b7. Creating a pass pawn. So I think getting the king in might be good. Or is it b5 if I want it more committal? I think this pass pawn here is probably a good bet for d3. So d4 creating pass pawn, opening up for rook c1s. Um, if b5, there might be a4. So I think d4 using the bishop backwards, protecting that b7. Okay, so, oh, it's just blundered, oh dear, okay, whoops, he's resigned. I enjoyed that thoroughly, actually, the exchange sack, because I wanted to, to, you know, that concept, oh, just these positional sacrifices are just amazing. They provide pieces with, with careers, don't they, these, these positional uh, sacrifices sometimes. I had huge central control. I didn't mind the queen exchange here. Look at these double pawns, isolated pawn. Look at the huge bishop on e4. Now, now it's just ready for getting two pawns for the exchange and getting huge pass pawn now. Oh, I enjoyed that. Comments or questions on YouTube? Hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks very much.